We're going to talk a little bit about jetting a ruckus carburetor. There's a lot of confusion on this. Uh, a lot of people uh, seem to try to avoid it at all costs, and the reality is it's a super simple task um, if you just follow some simple guidelines and kind of understand what's going on here. Uh, the first step before you get to this point of having a carburetor on a table would be to drain the fuel out. And that is done on the bottom of the carburetor. If you see here, this little nipple, you can put a hose on, like so. Flathead screwdriver opens that valve. You don't have to remove this all the way. Just crack that open. That will drain the fuel out, save quite a bit of mess. Tighten that back up, throw your hose away, and you'll be ready to remove these two screws so that you can pull this off the manifold. A lot of times these are really tight, as are the bolts on the bottom of the float bolt very important to use a number two screwdriver. They fit these bolts appropriately. If you don't, a lot of times you'll round these off and just cause a lot of headache. So with that said, get the right tool, bust these loose, pull the carburetor off, and you're to this point. With the carburetor drained, we'll turn it upside down. You have three bolts in the bottom of the float bolt. We're going to remove these. The float bowl will lift straight away. Now we have some floats, needle and valve here, a little pin that holds this mechanism. We're not going to deal with any of that, so don't be concerned about that. The only two things we're going to change will be the pilot jet here and the main jet here. Be aware, a lot of times if your ruck has hadn't been ridden in a long time and it won't start, it's because of this pilot jet. The ID of that jet is so small that any amount of old gas will clog that and give you the trouble. So if you're having an issue getting your bike started, this is the single jet here you want to get at. You can pull that out, look through it. If you cannot see through that when holding it up to the sky or light, it's clogged. We'll remove this pilot first. Be aware, these are brass, they're super soft. They're fairly easy to break if you're not paying some attention. So again, get a screwdriver that fits that correctly. Get it in good. That should turn out pretty easy. Pilot jet. Stock is number 35 in almost every application we've ever dealt with. The 38 is optimal. We're going to put our new 38 in the pilot hole. Tighten that down again because these are brass. Be aware that the threads are easily damaged. You do not need to put a lot of torque on this. Get these nice and snug and you're done there. Just like the pilot, we have our main jet here. Simply unscrew that. Stock is a 75. Uh, on the main jet, the size will depend on your application. In this particular application, we're running an aftermarket exhaust and a aftermarket intake. So we're gonna jump up from a 75 to an 82. Um, typically, you'll end up somewhere between a 78 and an 85. Uh, of note, when you order jets, order uh, quite a few options because typically, if you order one at a time, you'll end up spending more in shipping than you do the actual jet. So it's best to have several on hand to test. So we'll go in with our 82. Lightly snug that up. And that's it. Back on with the float bowl, checking to see that all our surfaces are clean. Now here's a shameless plug. We're gonna install this beautiful man-in-the-box carburetor cap. But the great thing is it comes with not only stainless Allens to hold the cap on, but we also supply three additional stainless Allens for the float bowl, which are substantially easier to use in the future than the stock Phillips head.
We're gonna go ahead and remove this carburetor cap, switch it for the billet piece. Again, this is not required uh, in the jetting procedure whatsoever, just a cosmetic modification. Two stock Phillips heads here to remove. I'm gonna hold down this cap because there's a spring there that has that a bit loaded. Ease that straight up. See the diaphragm of the spring? We'll just keep that there. Now we're gonna install the new billet piece. Much like the stock unit, it has a boss inside to locate this spring. So we're gonna take just a second and line that up. Ease the part down. Use two of the supplied stainless Allen heads to snug that up. And that job's finished. As an option, if you want to further the cosmetic appeal of this carburetor, you can get one of these man-in-the-box decals and just apply it that. You could do that. You could do this. A lot of options with this particular decal.